If you're a beginner high rocks athlete, I've put together my best beginner high rocks tips that most importantly I've <laughs> used over the past year or so as I've started this journey into high rocks. If you're thinking about doing a high rocks or you've done one and you want to get better and you kind of went into the last one completely oblivious to what high rocks actually is, let's jump into high rocks for beginners. Let me take you through everything you need to know to get started on your high rocks journey. What's up guys? I'm Josiah Novak and uh, I run a company called The True Transformation. The cool part about this video is I'll just tell you up front, I am not the best high rocks athlete in the world. So anybody watching this who's like, oh, you've never won a high rocks or you've never even been top three. Cool. I get it. Uh, this is my journey and I'm going to share with you the tips I'm learning as I've now done, I believe, six high rocks events along with a ton of other hybrid fitness racing events. And I've won a ton of local hybrid fitness events. So I do have some credibility here. But most importantly, I've transformed thousands of people probably just like you over the years from overweight, out of shape, unhealthy mentally to feeling, looking, and performing at their best. I know what I'm talking about with fitness, but I want to start sharing more of my high rocks and other hybrid fitness events. My experience, that is, my journey, so that it most importantly helps you and we can relate to each other and support each other as we go along. So let's jump into my first tip if you're a beginner at high rocks. All right, so most people think of hybrid fitness and they go, oh, I got to be ready for the stations, right? I remember doing this when I started racing Spartans a few years ago and I thought about all of the obstacles and all the things, and by no means are those things unimportant. They're very important, knowing each station, how to be prepared, what levels of strength you need for each one, technique, all that kind of stuff. We'll talk about that in a bit. But the most important thing is running. Running is almost 60% of the actual High Rocks event. So if you haven't been running at all, or your running form is terrible, or you get hurt every time you start running, we need to put a huge emphasis on your running abilities. All right, this is arguably the most important tip. Now, I do have two killer tips that I am saving. I'm going to share with one here in a couple minutes with you, but then at the end, I'm giving my best tip away. So make sure you watch the whole video. But tip number one is let's get better at running. So how do we do that? Well, let me tell you. So I don't coach people on how to do high rock specifically. I'm more of the guy who transforms your life from the inside out, right? I want to get you mentally better. And then obviously get your habits and routines, get your body fat down, get all that stuff dialed in. But if I were forced to create a high rocks running prep program, there's really three types of running I would focus on. Number one, I would say is the most important and that is longer, easy run. All right, this is where we want to keep our heart rate nice and low, keep your conversation going as you run, meaning a conversational pace. You could talk to somebody while you're running. This is what we call getting into the aerobic or low aerobic zone, more like zone two if you're into the runner terms. But most importantly, it's just an easy run. This gets our body better at being able to be efficient over long periods of time, keeping our heart rate down, being able to keep moving and also help get our soft tissue, the tissue that is going to take an impact while we run more efficient and better capable or more capable of handling longer events. So number one type of run you should have in your schedule is a long run. How long you should run and what's the distance you should cover? That varies from person to person. I would say start on a low end. So if you're like, I could probably go run an easy five miles. I'd probably cut that in half to be honest. I'd say, okay, I'm going to go do two or three at the most. See how I feel. It's always better to start slower with your running and then add as you go along. This will help you avoid injury, keep you healthy, especially as you get closer to the race. The second type of running is what I call compromise running. This is where we get good at doing the stations and then going to run when we're out of breath and we're feeling like death, basically. So an example would be if I did a burpee broad jump, which is something we'll talk about here in a couple minutes, arguably the hardest station in the high rocks. You're going to come out of that feeling like, wow, I just did an insane workout and now I got to go run a thousand meters. Well, we got to practice this. This is called compromise running. So you're not going to be as worried about heart rate here, you're going to be more worried about your tempo. So practicing running at a race level pace after doing a station or in between specific stations. So this is where like real specific high rocks workouts at least once a week will help you tremendously. So you can find a ton of these on the internet. I post them on my social media, but once a week getting some compromise running in would be important. There's one more that you need to include as well. The third type of running is specific speed work. All right. So this is where we'll pick a tempo in this case, what we call probably like a threshold pace. I'll just tell you right now, I am not a running expert. I've learned a lot from some great coaches like, like Ryan Giger, who's my personal high rocks coach, like guys on my team, like Ryan Callen. Must be something with the name Ryan, because there's another guy named, named Rich Ryan, and then a guy named Ryland, who I'm friends with. These guys are just phenomenal runners, and they know their stuff. I'm just lucky enough to have learned from them over the years. But I'll tell you, speed work is something you got to include. This is the third type of run. So this is where we pick shorter distances. In my 
case, I was doing like 400 meter repeats where I would run, you know, once around the track at a really fast pace, then I would rest, I'd recover for a period of time, and then I would do it again, right? So we're working on our body's ability to generate more power and speed, not compromise running, that's different, and not the easy, long duration running, the easy aerobic runs that are, I think, the most important to start, speed work. So those are the three types of runs. This is the overall tip number one, which is be prepared to run. It's almost 60% running at High Rock. So if you're not running currently and your race is in one week, well, I might want to pick another race. But <laughs> ultimately, get your running going now so that you're prepared for High Rock. So let's talk about tip number two. And don't forget, I have my best tip for the last one. This will blow your mind. But anyway, let's go to tip number two. So if you're going to go into the High Rocks and you have this race mentality, which is one I've been guilty of so many times, and that is literally, I'm going to win the High Rocks no matter what it takes. And I go out of the gates like a crazy person, right? Sprinting, trying to do the stations as fast as possible, and then hitting what we call the wall, right? This is where you go, wow, I am not cut out for this. I'm not in shape. I feel terrible. This sucks. And the rest of the race is just you trying to survive. My advice would be to ease into the race, all right? Obviously, uh, once again, we'll talk about the most important tip at the end. You're going to know what to expect, but you're going to get into the race and you're going to feel like, wow, this is more intense than I had planned on, right? This is just normal, I think. I think most athletes will agree. Until you've done tons of these things, it's going to be a little bit of a shock to the system. So I suggest because adrenaline's going to be pumping, you're going to come out of the gate, the music's going, the DJ's killing it, you got the MC on the mic, like you got hundreds of guys and girls running around you, most of them freaking in shape, and you're like, what is going on? This is nuts. And your brain goes, all right, you got to push. In these beginning parts of the race, purposely make it feel easy. Trust me, you'll be thankful that you did because you'll hit the middle of the race, which is the machine I'm sitting on. This is the row machine. This is, I believe, station five out of eight at the High Rocks. Arguably the easiest one, at least for me, to kind of sit down, get a breather, get my form, get my breath back. By the time you get to the middle of the race, you'll be like, oh, I can step it up a notch and you'll finish strong, which is the most important thing. Because I'll tell you, I've been in races over the past year where the guys I started the race with, oh, they blew me away in the beginning. I was like, well, there they go. There, I don't even see them anymore. By the time I get to the middle of the race, I'm running past them because they blew their gas tank way too early on. And I purposely start easier than I want to so that I can build as the race goes. I can get faster, better, stronger. So tip number two, start easier on purpose. Let's go to tip number three and then we'll finish with the last one. Now these last two tips are my best ones. So do not skip these. These are gonna change the game. It, it, it most, most importantly, mentally for you. But one thing I experimented with, and this won't necessarily always be possible for you, but the training environment that I create to get ready for high rocks, I've tried to make it more challenging than the actual high rocks. I'm gonna explain what I mean. So I personally suck at running in the heat. In the heat, I tend to overheat. I'm 220 pounds on my heavier days. I'm like 217 on my lighter days, right? So I'm a bigger person. I carry a lot of muscle. And I start running in the heat, my body heat, my heart rate go through the roof. And so I start to feel pretty crappy. So what I've tried to do, especially on my like race specific training days where I'm training things like wall balls and burpees and then I'm running afterwards and I'm, I'm really pushing myself. And these days, we're not, in those days, I'm not worried about heart rate. I'm just worried about being efficient through the workout. I started doing it outside in the heat. Now it's summertime where I am now. So maybe you're watching this and you're like, dude, I live in Antarctica. Thanks for the advice. Well, you know what? Honestly, you could get more uncomfortable even in cold environments. You could train in the cold and be like, man, this sucks. This hurts. My breath, like even breathing in, it feels like I'm just inhaling ice, right? Because once you get to the high rocks, thankfully, it's the same event every time. We'll talk about some of the things may not be the same, but it is a consistent event, meaning the stations are in the same order. You know, it's the same distance running in between each station, but it's indoors and it's air conditioned. And yes, it gets humid because there's a lot of bodies. There's a lot of people putting heat off because they're training. But I'll tell you right now, it's not nowhere near as uncomfortable as training in 90 degree heat like I did before my last high rocks where I set a 10 minute PR. I trained in uncomfortable situations so that when I get to the race and it is uncomfortable, I'm like, well, at least I'm not overheating, right? And I feel a little better. So mentally prepare yourself by making some of the training harder than the actual event itself. Promise you the race will always be mentally the most challenging because you are going to be pushing yourself, but physically you'll be like, oh, I've done things that felt harder than this so I can get through this. So you'll have more self-belief. Let's go to my last and most important tip. This one will change the game for you. Let's do it. Okay. The best tip. I promise this one for the end. So hopefully this will give you as much help as it's given me. I am a former athlete that played baseball. I'm a huge fan of all sports. I coach a bunch of sports for my kids. And one thing we've started doing is reviewing film. Now you're like, dude, what are you talking about? So I want you to go into high rocks over prepared.
prepared for everything. So here's how you get a little bit ahead of the game. First of all, you watch videos like this. Okay, so take full advantage of all of my libraries of High Rocks videos. Search the internet for High Rocks, but you can also now watch former races. You can go watch old races, world championships. You can take the form that these people use, right? And you can apply it to yourself. You go into the race with a game plan for each station, okay? So review film, so you're watching other athletes, how they do it. What do their transitions look like? What does their form look like on the row machine, on the ski machine? Practice it, mimic it, right? Success leaves clues. You don't have to go into the race going, oh, well, how do I do a ski? Or how do I do a farmer's carry? Or what should my pace be? Or how do I do a burpee broad jump? Like, what is the pace they, they take? How many steps are they taking on the sled before they take a break? Watch how the best in the world do it, okay? Then at each station, have a game plan. Okay, when I get to the sled, I'm gonna take eight steps, three breaths. Eight steps, three breaths, right? And of course, it's gonna vary slightly for you maybe because your fitness level could be different than others. But if you have a written down game plan before you go into the race, meaning, literally type it out, write it out, read it a couple times, review it with your team, with your friends who are maybe doing the race with you. I promise you, you'll go into the race relaxed. Like my first high rocks, I went into it, had not watched any film on how to do things. I was like, oh, there's a sled push. Oh, there's a sled pull. Okay, how do I do all these things? Well, I'm an athlete, I should be able to handle it. Not so fast, right? It's a totally different game when it's an actual race with running and other stations that tire you out. So review film, sit down and write out a game plan for each station. What's gonna be your strategy? Where do you wanna push yourself during the race? Where do you wanna ease back a little bit? What pace do you wanna run at? Write all this down ahead of time, okay? This is part of mental preparation. This will change your race completely. Here's the thing too, you're gonna, you may get into the race and you go, well, the plan that I wrote down didn't work so great for this station, cool. That's a mental note for the next one. But the cool part is you got notes for the following stations. You got notes for the following runs in your head. So you're like, okay, cool. Plan A didn't work so great, but I'm gonna move into the next station and rip it according to the plan that I wrote down. And you remember visually what that looked like when you review tape of other top athletes doing the high rocks or doing whatever hybrid race you're doing. That's the beauty of the internet. That's the beauty of the information age that we're in now. We can be more prepared. We can have video footage, audio footage. We know like, hey, what to expect, what to feel like. And then when you get the race, you're like, ah, it's like muscle memory, right? And, and you're just gonna have a more efficient race. So that is the most important thing to do before you get into things. You would be shocked at how powerful and efficient you can be with some preparation on the front end. All right, guys, that wraps up today's High Rocks for Beginners video. I have a ton of other hybrid racing videos and we're adding more each and every month to help you become the best version of yourself. I decided to do more of these type of videos because honestly, I don't want fitness to stop for you when you lose weight. I don't want you to go back to doing what you were doing before. Fitness has so many adventures to be had. These are just a few in the hybrid racing space that you could jump into. My specialty is helping you use fitness to transform not just how you look and feel, but every part of your life. I believe fitness is the lowest hanging fruit to seeing wins in everything you do. So if you wanna learn more about our VIP transformation system where we help people just like you who are powerful, have a great career, busy schedule, but you wanna lose the weight, you wanna look, feel, and perform at your best, check out the description. We have a ton of resources, including a link to check out our program directly. But if this video was helpful, if you're gonna do a high rocks, let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. Life moves fast, go make it count. I'll talk to you on the next video. Peace.